In this video, we'll talk all about optionals in Java. Optionals are tough to understand, and even when developers do understand them, they're constantly using them the wrong way. So we're going to clear up exactly what they are, when they should be used, and how to use them. Before that, this video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot makes high quality, reasonably priced ergonomic office furniture and is probably best known for their standing desks. They have a ridiculous number of desks to choose from, each with tons of customization options. This one is the E7 Pro Plus standing desk. I'm recording on it right now. Its carbon steel frame and dual motor design make it capable of holding up to 355 pounds. So you can keep all of your work, school, and gaming devices, and 100 pound set of adjustable dumbbells on top with no worry. It has a crazy height range from 22.8 inches all the way to 48.4 inches. I'm six foot five and it goes even higher than I need it to. You can program in four height presets to quickly go from sitting to standing with a single touch. There's even a USB port right here on the side of the keypad, so you can conveniently charge your devices. I use that all the time. The E7's quality and smart design make it the best ergonomic desk choice for your home office. Be sure to check it out through my link down in the description because you'll get an extra $30 off your purchase. FlexiSpot is also having their own Prime Day sale on June 29th and 30th with up to $100 off their products. So start customizing your own standing desk through my link down in the description to get that extra $30 off, and I know you'll love it as much as I do. Now let's get to it. First, just what exactly is an optional? All an optional is, is a container that either has something in it or doesn't. That probably sounds super weird, right? What's the point of that? So let's start right away with an example. Let's say that we had a simple method in our program that took in the name of a cat as a parameter and then went to the database and retrieved a cat object with that name and returned it. So that would be just private static cat because we want to return a cat and we'll call this method find cat by name. And then we'll take in as a parameter that string name for the cat that we're looking for. Now in a real application, this would actually fetch a cat from the database, but here we're just going to create a cat object with that name and return it. So to do that, we'll just say cat cat equals new cat. Now this constructor takes the cat's name as the first parameter. So we'll just enter in the name that's passed into this method. And it takes the cat's age as the second parameter. So we'll just give it the age of three. And then all we have to do is return that cat. So now back here in our main method, we can call this find cat by name method, and we can pass in the name of the cat that we want to find. So let's just pass in Fred. So that method will of course return the cat it retrieved from the database. And if we want, we can store it in variable. So let's do that cat my cat equals the result of this method call. So now of course, if we want, we can print out the age of the cat that it retrieved. So print out my cat dot get age. And of course, if we run it, that all works fine and it prints out three. But what if there is no cat named Fred in the database? In that case, what should a method like this return? Well, it probably makes sense to just return null, right? If that cat doesn't exist, it doesn't make sense to return a cat. It just makes sense to return null. But now we have a problem. This method is now returning null, which means that we're now trying to call the getAge method on a null variable. And of course, if we try that, we will get a null pointer exception. You see this kind of situation all the time. And the only way we can really handle the situation is with a null check. Just something like if my cat does not equal null, then go ahead and print out its age. Otherwise, maybe we print out some default age uh, like zero. So this is the way you had to handle this type of situation for a long time in Java. This whole situation is where optionals come in. Optionals are a better way to handle a situation where a method like this might not have a value to return. So here's the idea. Instead of returning an actual cat object or null, it instead returns an optional. An optional is like this box. It either contains the cat or it doesn't. So basically now what our method will do is if it finds a cat with that name in the database, it will put that cat in the optional box and return it. And if it doesn't find anything, it will just return the empty box. And then the code that is processing this return value can ask this optional box whether it contains a value or not, and then do the appropriate thing if it does or doesn't. 
So really the main purpose of an optional is to explicitly tell the user of a method that the value that they're looking for might not exist and they have to account for that possibility. So maybe instead of just thinking of optionals as a box, you can instead think of it as a box that says, hey, I might not have a value in here, so you have to be prepared to handle that situation. So now that we know that we want to return an optional of a cat here in our method instead of just a cat object, how exactly do we go about doing that? So all we have to do is instead of having cat as our return type, we'll instead have optional of cat. So we just have optional and then cat in angle brackets. And here we have this cat object to return, but we have to put that cat inside the optional box first. The easiest way to do that is with this method here, optional.ofNullable. And then you just pass into this method as a parameter the thing you want to create an optional of, which here is cat. Now this value that you pass into the of nullable method can either be null or not. If it's not null, it'll just put that value into the optional, as we said. But if it is null, like if this cat didn't exist in the database, it will instead just create an empty optional. As a side note, if you know for sure that the thing that you want to put into this optional is not null, then you can instead just use optional.of. But if you pass in something that is null to this method, you're going to get an exception. So if you're not sure whether or not the thing that you're passing in is null, just go ahead and use of nullable. Also, if you ever want to explicitly create an empty optional, you can just use optional.empty. Anyway, now up here, of course, we're not just getting a cat object anymore, we're getting an optional of cat returned from this method call. So we have to change this to optional of cat, and we'll change the name uh, to optional cat. So now instead of having just a cat, we have an optional that may or may not contain a cat. So how do we actually get the cat out of this optional? First, let me show you how basically everybody does it when they first use optionals. So there is a method on each optional just called get, and the get method will return the value that's inside the optional. So you can just use this get method, which will return our original cat object, and then we can call get age on it. And of course, like before, if we want, we can go ahead and print that out, and it works. However, if there is no value in this optional to get, so that's like the case if this method uh, didn't find that cat in the database, it might create an optional of null. So this will return an empty optional. And if you try to call get on an empty optional, you get a no such element exception, which will ruin your day. So that's a problem, right? It's just as bad as a null pointer exception. So then most developers figure that out pretty quickly. Okay, I have to do a check on this optional to see if there's a value in it before I call dot get. But luckily there's a method that you can call on the optional to check whether there's a value present. So we can just call optional cat dot is present. Is present will return true if there is a value in the optional and false if it's empty. So we can set things up like this. Uh, if optional cat dot is present, then go ahead and print out the age. Otherwise, like we did before, we'll go ahead and print out some default uh, like zero. And we can go ahead and run it and it's all good. It prints out the default of zero if this optional was empty. Well, perfect, that settles it, right? Except, hey, this whole setup looks suspiciously exactly like the null check that we were trying to get away from in the first place. So what's the deal, right? All of that work just to get something that looks almost exactly like we had before? So there's a couple of things here. First, remember that the primary reason for returning an optional in a method like this is to blatantly convey to the user of this method that it might not return a value that they're looking for and make sure that they know that they have to deal with that situation. So even if the end result did look similar, it's still making that clear to the user just by returning an optional in the first place. But also, optional offers some other nice methods to use instead of using this is present get combination. And actually the people who created Java optionals kind of regret that they even offered this get method in the first place because it's just so easy for people to call something that looks so harmless as dot get without checking is present first. 
So I think when you're first learning the concept of optionals and how to work with them, it's fine to use this is present and get combination j just to get the feel of things. As long as you are always checking is present every time before you call get. But once you get more familiar with them, there are nicer methods you can use to work with them. One of the methods that's commonly used is actually called or else. Kind of a weird name for a method, right? Almost sounds like a threat. Optional cat or else. But what this method does is kind of interesting. So if this optional contains a value, it will just return that value. But if this optional is empty, this method will instead return the value that you pass in here as a parameter. You can kind of think of it as a default. So we could have something like cat my cat equals optional cat or else. So maybe as our default cat, we could say new cat and just give it a name of unknown and an age of zero. So what this will do is if this optional contains a cat, it will just return it exactly the same way that the get method did. However, or else, if the optional is empty, instead of just blowing up, this method will return this default unknown cat uh, with an age of zero. So that's a pretty elegant solution, right? It gives you the value if it's there, but if it's not, it doesn't ever throw an exception or anything. It just provides you the default value. Another method that's available is called or else get. If you're comfortable with lambdas, and check out this lambdas video if you're not, you can use this method and pass in a lambda supplier function. So with this method, if the optional contains a value, as before, it will just return it. But if the optional is empty, it will use your lambda method to supply the default value to return. Again, if you aren't super comfortable with lambdas yet, don't worry too much about this method. But if you are, it's good to know about. Ironically, there's also this method called or else throw. Now what this method does is, if the optional contains a value, it just returns it. But if the optional is empty, it will throw a no such element exception. Now if that sounds familiar to you, it's because that's exactly the same thing that the dot get method does. Those two methods do exactly the same thing. There is no difference. In fact, in the Java docs for get, so if you uh, hover over get here in the IDE, it tells you API note, the preferred alternative to this method is or else throw. But here's an example of some of the real power of optionals. Notice that in our situation, we were mainly interested in just getting the age of the cat that was pulled back from the database, right? Well, we can actually do that with optionals with just a couple of chained method calls. So what we can do is take our optional cat and then call a method on it called map. What this map method allows us to do is to take our cat optional and transform it into an optional of another type. And it does that with a method that we pass in as a parameter. That may sound a bit weird, but let me show you what I mean. So we can actually pass into this method cat colon colon get age. Again, if you're not really used to lambdas yet, this looks a little weird. But what this method call will return is an optional containing the result of calling the get age method on the cat that was in our original cat optional. If our original cat optional was empty, then the result of this method call will just be an empty optional as well, and it won't throw any exceptions or anything. So now with this method call, we have an optional that contains the age of that cat. And to safely get the value of that optional, we can just use a method like or else, which if you remember, will just return the value inside the optional if it exists, and otherwise it will return some default that we give it. Here, it probably makes sense to return a default age of zero. So now if our original cat optional has a value and its age has a value, then this will successfully return that age. But if either this original cat optional was empty or its age was empty, it will just return a default age of zero. And it does all of that logic with just this tiny bit of code. Of course, you can have even more layers of transformation in here as well. And once you get used to using it, it can be really powerful. And there are other methods that are offered by optionals as well. And I encourage you to take some time and go through them and play around with them. So now with all of that said, a question you might have is, so where should I be using optionals? Should I use them anywhere something might be null? What exactly should I do? And here's the answer that not everybody wants to hear. Optionals are really intended to only be used how we're using them here. 
And that's as a return type, where without optionals, your method has the possibility of returning null. So it is certainly technically possible to have an optional as like a method parameter. Optionals are just like any other objects, so technically you can create and use them wherever you want. But the truth is that optionals were only intended to be used as a return type, and that's to blatantly tell the user of that method that the value that they're looking for might not exist and they have to deal with that situation. They're not intended to be used just anywhere you have a null variable. It's meant for just this type of situation, so try not to overuse them. But in this type of situation, they can add a lot of value and help you avoid null pointer exceptions. As always, if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know by hitting the like button and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. And be sure to check out my full Java course in the link down in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you being here with me. And I'll see you next time.